Hello. My Facebook Live is getting a bit like, where's Wally? Um, today I'm in Bunnings in the middle of Sydney, sitting in their outdoor furniture area, which is very comfortable because it's also in the air conditioning. But the various people wandering past me, looking at me like I'm a complete idiot. So that's all right. We'll just get straight on with what I was going to talk about. Now, I had an interesting comment on the blog this morning and um, I love comments on the blog so please keep commenting on the post. This was written in response to one of the um, 100 day email series. So if you go along to the blog at candoequine.com, if you're not yet getting the 100 day email series, please sign up for it because we're getting a lot of really good discussion going on and um, some really interesting topics. And it's just you get an email every day for the next 100 days and there'll be something to chat about and you can go along to the blog and leave your comment and I'm responding to everybody and other people are talking to each other and we're building a really nice community there. So do pop along. And anyway, this one was about the Blue Horse Matinee um, dressage. Now, I've provided the link up the top of this post for you so you can watch the YouTube video. Um, most of you have probably seen it. It's one of those ones that comes up on Facebook like all the time and you get these comments like, oh, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. That horse is having such a good time. That horse is dancing, blah, blah, blah. And this is what inspired me to do dressage and, you know, really over the top comments. What I want you to do, if you haven't already done this, is go and watch that YouTube video, but watch it without the sound. So turn the sound off because we often watch with our ears. So turn the sound off and watch it through once and just make a mental note of what you think, how you think the horse is going, what you think the horse is saying. Then watch it again with the sound because it's a freestyle, so there's music, but the real thing that interrupts with actually how, what you see when you view this is the commentary from the commentator. And it really does color your impression of the performance of the horse. And I'd, I'd be very interested to hear um, what you find when you, when you do watch it without the sound and then when you go back and watch it with the sound and see if you um, see if it changes how you feel about it. Um, one thing the comment said this morning was that you know she noticed that the horse um, was swishing its tail a lot. And one of the things about horses is that they're very very voiceless. Like they ha they have the very limited repertoire of behaviours that they can exhibit that show they're uncomfortable, distressed, or in pain or anxious. One of them is swishing their tails. And if you think about that, if, what was really interesting is that if we did a lot of the things we do to a horse, if we did that to a dog, we'd be arrested and you know probably thrown in jail or something. So just imagine if you clamped your dog's mouth closed with a, you know, a bit of leather strap, you'd probably be thrown in jail. If you then went and put a whole lot of pressure on something in its mouth and started jabbing it in the side or hitting it with a whip, you'd probably be jailed for that. And with a horse, it's, it's absolutely fine. The dog can tell us really quickly that that's not okay. It can bark, it can bite, it can yell and do all sorts of things. The horse, horses habituate to things really, really easily. And they also, they don't have the ability to scream and yell um, and to tell us in the same way as a dog or a cat does that it's distressed or uncomfortable. What I found really interesting when I did that nose band experiment, so we were tightening up nose bands to, first of all, we did a tightness where you could fit two fingers under the nose band, which is the sort of conventional way of doing it. Then we did a tightness where there was just one finger and then um, we did a tightness where you couldn't fit any fingers under there. So there was what we call no space. So we didn't crank it up, but we tightened it so that you couldn't slide anything under the nose band. Um, and we found that the horses looked pretty normal. They weren't chewing or licking their lips or yawning because they couldn't because their mouths were clamped closed, but they looked pretty normal. And watching that, 
um, as an experiment, so see, we just stood and stood back and watched the horses. I thought this is going to be very boring because we're actually not seeing anything. I thought maybe the horses were a bit quieter. I, you know, we didn't know that they weren't licking and chewing until we went back and analysed that video and counted the number of times they opened their mouth and that sort of thing. But what really shocked me was their heart rates. And we can't see this. There's no way of knowing if your horse is distressed um, unless you're measuring its heart rate. And some of those heart rates went up from a normal sort of 33 beats per minute to over 100 beats per minute with no behavioural changes. So nothing you could observe from looking at the horse that it was distressed at all. And as soon as the noseband was removed, the heart rates dropped back to normal. So anyone that tells me that their horse doesn't mind having its noseband tight or is habituated to that, um, I'd say, well, let's put a tight noseband on and see how your horse behaves. So the horse that in the video, the blue horse matinee in the video, is not, other than swishing its tail like a helicopter, it hasn't actually got the ability to show any other form of distress. Um, and so it's unfair to say that the horse looks um, like it's happy or it's enjoying it or anything else because we really don't know that and that's a judgment call we often make because we're listening to the commentator and that's why I want you to listen to it twice or watch it twice once with and once without the commentary I think somebody's about to come and sit down with me actually um, so go, go and do that have a look and I'd be really interested to hear what you think the other thing that this nice lady that commented on that video this morning or on my blog post this morning the thing she said at the end was um, that she was impressed that her um, about the, the she was impressed with the training level of a horse. She said that I would never be able to train my horse to do that, and and I think that she's underestimating herself and her horse. Now I don't know her. I've, we've not met. And I don't know her horse, but. I think to make the assumption that you'd never be able to train your horse to do movements such as PR um, is a big mistake and I don't think you should ever say that about your, yourself, your ability or your horse's ability and that's something I'll, I'll talk about next week um, because yeah, it's not a good starting point. A good starting point is, hey, what's PR? PR, oh, it's really just trotting on the spot. Can my horse trot? My horse can trot. You can train it to pee up, not a problem. All right, so I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday Fitness, so anybody wanting to get fit, come and see me tomorrow at 2 o'clock Brisbane time. God knows where I'll be. I think I'll be in camera. See you from camera. Bye.